Hello again, everyone. It's great seeing you again, and thanks for joining us on this fifth day of December 2020 for Saturday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, meteorologist with the National Weather Service, and I'll be hosting today's show. Up first, has this weather graphic uh, up in the interior there for the uh, upper Yukon Valley, southwestward into the central interior around the greater Tanana area. Uh, that's an advisory for cold wind chills, and that's uh, in effect, uh, let's see, until midnight, or actually it goes into effect from midnight tonight until noon Sunday, and that's for uh, wind chills of 45 degrees below zero, and that includes uh, areas along the Dalton Highway, really areas that have winds gusting to 35 miles an hour out of the northeast will produce those uh, low wind chills, and that's again in effect from midnight tonight until noon Sunday. Down to the south, uh, we've got a flash flood uh, warning out for the northern panhandle there due to snow melt and heavy rains, and more heavy rains expected. Uh, so the uh, uh, Haynes Klondike Highway up to Skagway, they're under the influence, or the actually the northern inside channels there in the shaded areas. Let me move on here, a little better view. That, again, a flash flood watch with the heavy rain and snow melt, warmer temperatures uh, coming in. So uh, flooding possible there. And then down south, uh, that's a watch area, a uh, southern panhandle uh, for the Prince of Wales Island and the uh, Ketchikan Metlakatla area eastward there to the border. That's a high wind watch, uh, and that kicks into effect, let's see, uh, from 6 a.m. Sunday morning until 3 p.m. Sunday afternoon. And that's for winds uh, 25 to 35 miles an hour, gusting above 60 miles an hour. Much like you've seen uh, today, where you had the 40 to 50 mile an hour gusts there, uh, like uh, earlier today, coming down now, but uh, another round coming in uh, late tonight and tomorrow. And on the satellite image, you can see the storm that uh, brought the heavy rain and wind to the southeast coast. Uh, a couple, actually, a couple of lows spinning northward there, main one off the north coast and the frontal boundary kind of hung up across the uh, panhandle there, moisture then streaming into the Yukon. Also out to the west, you can see the next developing uh, system uh, spreading uh, clouds up to the Alaska Peninsula and the higher mid-level stuff reaching Kodiak Island. Otherwise, back to the west, uh, we've got basically a northeast flow out that area, but winds are on the increase across southern Alaska. It's mostly dry today, some variable clouds and areas of low clouds patchy fog over the uh, valley areas of interior Alaska. And then the Arctic coast uh, blizzard warning continued through into about mid-afternoon today for the eastern Arctic coast where uh, Barter Island is continuing to see winds gusting around 50 miles an hour. They've, last I looked, they're down to 45 miles an hour out of the west and uh, still seeing some uh, reduced visibilities there, but the blizzard warning has actually ended now and conditions much better back on the central and western Arctic coast. So the areas of light snow continue to fall. Otherwise, uh, mostly clear skies there along the southwest coast of Nunavak Island and just uh, some scattered clouds for St. Lawrence Island and the Pribilof, uh cloudy skies. Uh, pretty windy conditions with uh, St. George Island seeing gusts to 52 miles per hour today. And uh, with that front, they're approaching the Alaska Peninsula Eastern Aleutians. Let's see, uh, Nikolsky and Dutch Harbor had gusts close to 60 miles an hour out of the east-northeast and uh, Akun Island airstrip there just east of uh, uh, Unalaska Island but west of Falls Pass. They had uh, winds gust to 66 miles per hour today. And over the uh, southeast coast, uh, south southwest of Wrangell or Petersburg, let's see, yes, Wrangell, uh, Lincoln Island had a gust to 70 miles an hour today. And also gusty winds along uh, Prince William Sound, Potato Point had gusts 46 miles an hour out of the northeast. And uh, rolling this again, you can see basically high pressure keeping it pretty nice over the interior. And that front, uh, or the front off the coast, actually is inland now, or right up along the coastline. 
there of the Panhandle with the uh, heavy rainfall, 24-hour rainfall amount at Ketchikan was uh, about four and a half inches of precipitation. While, uh, let's see, two inches fell at Petersburg and Elfin Cove had about one and a third inches. Craig a little over an inch there uh, with definitely the heaviest uh, down south and about eight tenths of an inch fell or just under an inch up at Haynes. And that mostly in the form of rain with a southerly flow there. Otherwise, uh, kind of a gradient across southern Alaska, giving some areas of breezy conditions. I noticed Tuxuk Bay was seeing gusts to about 40 miles an hour out of the east-northeast this afternoon. And then again, the stronger winds I mentioned down over the Alaska Peninsula eastern Aleutians and the lighter winds up under the high-pressure ridge extending from the Russian far east and across into the uh, Yukon there. And uh, still enough of a gradient to keep the snow and blowing snow going on the eastern Arctic coast there. But that all winding down, that trough moves really weakens and moves through tonight with uh, just flurries. And again, the blizzard warning has ended. And then a weak trough kind of is trying to squirm its way between the two high centers there. Uh, could bring some flurries back to the, uh, or continue the flurries going on the western Arctic coast, but may extend it down possibly to Point Hope. And amounts will be quite light and wind's not a factor at all. Definitely big increase in the wind, rain, heavy, heavy rain moving into the southern panhandle again with moderate to heavy rain extending northward. And that also pressing into Kodiak Island, starting out uh, mixed and but trending toward uh, just plain rain, especially down at sea level. Uh, it won't take long for that to happen. Otherwise, rain and snow showers with a weak trough over the uh, eastern and central Aleutians, mostly uh, from ADAC eastward there, but again, those amounts won't be light with higher pressure in towards Chimian at two. Now, 946 millibar low, you can see for tomorrow, uh, begins to weaken down to 955 millibars, and the uh, tracks northeastward a little bit, and the main frontal boundary pushes up to close to Kodiak Island. So, gusty winds, rain, moderate to heavy at times there, and increasing wind and rain, looking at high end gales back into the southeast coast there with that warm front with rain, heavy at times uh, all along the coastline. Uh, especially at sea level. Uh, elevations over toward the border may be mixture or uh, snow, but uh, not looking for much in the way of snow at all. And that same pattern for the North Gulf Coast, starting a warming trend over southern Alaska, uh, actually tonight and into tomorrow, with the increasing clouds over the southeast interior as that Arctic Ridge kind of retreats back to the north a little bit, and that'll uh, keep it fair with light winds over the Arctic coast with just a few flurries. And moving on to Monday, you can see that low center tracks up just east of Kodiak Island into the western Gulf of Alaska, uh, kind of another frontal boundary developing there and pushing uh, more uh, rain and gusty winds on the north coast of the Panhandle, but up to the eastern north Gulf coast as well with uh, milder temperatures, mixture precipitation possible over southern south central Alaska down into Bristol Bay. But not much getting into the interior, maybe a few uh, light areas of snow along the eastern slopes of the western Alaska range and up over the northeast interior. Some flurries along the western Arctic coast into the Bering Strait. But that uh, cold air coming southward over the Bering Sea, picking up enough moisture for periods of light snow from the Pribloffs, and then that mixes with rain into the eastern Aleutians. More scattered snow shower activity back over the western Aleutians. Then another low, uh, kind of a week uh, uh, Weaker low, still 982 millibars of us over, over Bristol Bay. So look for periods of snow along the southwest coast. And uh, could be either or there for Bristol Bay. Any elevation there in the Aleutian Range or the Alaska Peninsula be in the form of snow with the more north-northwest flow coming around, the colder air coming back in. As those snowfall levels begin to drop there again down towards sea level for the eastern Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula late in the day. Uh, but again, just a uh, chance of some light precipitation for Northern Cook Inlet and on up into the Madagascar to sit in the valley fair over the interior. And for lows tonight, uh, again, quite cold, anywhere from uh, 25 to 35 below there over the Yukon Flats, but a shade above zero along the Arctic coast or either side, mid 40s under mild southerly flow for the Panhandle near 30 Kodiak Island, lower 30s out over the Aleutians, lower 20 St. Lawrence Island. Highs for tomorrow, Staying well below zero, north of the Alaska Range, anywhere from 10 to 15 below, maybe 20 below there, central and eastern interior, and 5 to 10 above for the Arctic coast, and 45 to 50 over the central and southern panhandle, near 40 in the north, near 40 Kodiak Island, lower to mid-30s, Alaska Peninsula and the Aleutians, and lower 20s in south central Alaska, with single numbers for your highs, uh, southern Cuscombe Valley, into the lower teens along the southwest coast, upper 20s, St. Lawrence Island. 
And then for the uh, Monday morning lows, we're looking something like this, anywhere from 15 to 20 below. So definitely milder, even up over the northeast interior and near 20 for south, uh, south central Alaska, upper 20s, lower 30s down over the southern Kenai Peninsula. Valdez forecast low 24, but five below for uh, uh, Glen Allen and uh, Yakona. And for the Panhandle, mid 30s north to lower 40s south and uh, Kodiak Island looking at lows in the upper 30s and mid to upper 20s for the Alaska Peninsula. Followed by highs again uh, 40s for the Panhandle all the way up to Yakutat and lower 40s uh, Homer, Soldovia, Seward areas and above freezing all the way up into Anchorage and Manduska to sit in the valley getting up into the mid 30s, mid 20s Copper River Basin and above zero for the most part over the interior. And now aviation weather around Alaska. Sunday morning, we've got some IFR there from the northern Seward Peninsula, actually coming out of the uh, interior there, wrapping back up around, uh, say, from Kivalina up to Point Hope, Cape Lisbon, on up uh, toward Atchisook, and then eastward into the north slope and along the north side of the Brooks Range. And then some IFR also extending across the central interior in areas, but uh, Southwest coast or southwest part of the state from the interior out uh, toward the Pribilofs looks uh, good VFR, marginal VFR for the Bering Sea and all of the Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula, Kodiak Island marginal, IFR just to the south southeast there and IFR uh, northern panhandle over toward the border becoming marginal VFR down south, marginal VFR on up to uh, Yakutat and then right along the coast over to about Cordova uh, but not into Prince William Sound. For the afternoon, uh, IFR does push in southern Kenai Peninsula, western Prince William Sound, as well as into the Copper River Basin, not quite to the Alaska Range, but north of the Alaska Range looks like a zone of IFR possible there in the 40 mile country, but uh, interior area is looking pretty good with VFR, uh, not quite as extensive on the southwest coast, but still quite a ways off the coast there in Nunavak Island VFR and the extreme eastern portion of St. Lawrence Island VFR, Bering Sea marginal, Aleutians marginal, Kodiak Island IFR and some IFR up over the North Slope. And for the morning on Monday, North Slope IFR to the eastern Arctic coast. And then uh, south of the Brooks Range looks uh, VFR and that extends uh, westward the Seward Peninsula and southward across uh, the lower Yukon River Valley in the Delta, Kuskokwim Delta to Togiak Bay VFR, Nunavak Island stays VFR, marginal for the Pribilofs, and areas of VFR over the central and western Aleutians, Fox Islands marginal, Alaska Peninsula has some IFR mainly on the Bering Sea side of things, Kodiak Island still in some IFR, IFR along the uh, Aleutian Range and the western Alaska Range, and then uh, also for the North Gulf Coast into the Copper River Basin, IFR, Panhandle, Western Central areas look marginal, IFR over toward the border, Lynn Canal Glacier Bay to Yakutat. And moving on to Monday afternoon, IFR uh, still pretty widespread and entrenched over the North Slope, especially Central and East side, and uh, marginal VFR on the Arctic Coast becoming VFR safe for Point Lay. Cape Lisburn Point Hope, Northwest Coast, Notak Valley VFR into the uh, Kobuk and possibly the Northern Koyukuk. And then VFR for the Yukon Delta, Norton Sound, Seward Peninsula, marginal VFR, St. Lawrence Island on down across the Eastern Bering Sea to the Eastern Aleutians and then scattered areas of marginal VFR for the Central and Western Aleutians, meaning VFR, Shimian Atu, Adak and Atka. And for Kodiak, uh, marginal VFR, IFR along the North Gulf Coast, uh, Western Prince William Sound again, and Eastern Turnagain Arm along the eastern slopes of the Western Alaska Range, Bristol Bay IFR, and uh, portions of the Panhandle also IFR. Taking a look at passes, we've got um, IFR possible northern entrance, Anatovic otherwise marginal. Adigan I'll just go marginal VFR th for the day, Lake Clark and Merrill VFR increasing moisture, becoming marginal VFR, especially on the eastern entrance of both passes. I think rainy, you'll see an increase in the clouds, but of the VFR variety. And windy VFR. Isabel, var VFR to start, becoming marginal throughout the day. Mentasta, probably occasionally marginal off and on uh, throughout the day, increasing in the afternoon. Tanita, VFR becoming marginal. Portage, marginal VFR early, becoming IFR probably uh, during the morning hours through the afternoon. Chilkoot and White, IFR, freezing levels 
Two to 4,000 feet across the Panhandle, 6,000 feet down over the Queen Charlotte's. At the surface there, uh, northern Lynn Canal Glacier Bay, North Gulf Coast, and the Alaska Peninsula to near St. George Island. And for icing, uh, some severe, actually actually severe, pushing across the southern Panhandle tomorrow with all that load of moisture coming in and otherwise considerable moderate there uh, over the southeast coast, angling back uh, along the North Gulf Coast into western Prince William Sound. Lighter icing threats out west, uh, pretty negligible by comparison, and none over the interior. And for the jet stream, good uh, south to southwest flow, southerly is 85 knots eastern gulf into the eastern north gulf coast, and then southwest uh, 55 to 75 knots over the interior, lighter out over the Bering Sea. 9,000 feet southwest 50 knots there, blowing in toward the Yukon Delta, and southeast 40 for the Kenai Peninsula, and turbulence, uh, Occasional severe there for the Alaska Peninsula. Space weather affects technologies. As conditions develop, we put out alerts, warnings, and watches to our customers so they can take action. The Space Weather Prediction Center has had a long-standing relationship with the power industry, so they've been aware that solar storms, the geomagnetic storm piece of that, can affect the operation of their systems and induce extra currents and loads on those systems that can either trip those systems offline or, or in the worst of cases, cause damage. That relationship goes back for several decades, in fact. A big incident in 1989 where part of Quebec was tripped offline that affected something like six million customers for about nine hours. I think that really raised the awareness in the power industries. When we get the alert, we watch the grid and start looking for issues. Are we seeing a decline in voltage? Are we seeing equipment failures? And we readjust the system to try to mitigate those problems, try to keep the lights on and keep it from going out. We're averaging about 500, 550 kilometers per second. If we didn't have this early warning, we wouldn't see it until our sensor saw it. Getting more information quicker and faster before the storm hits, not during the storm, is a big improvement. In the long term, I think what we need and what we're moving toward the U.S. as a whole is better modeling, fully understanding this phenomenon, understanding how it would impact specific systems. Rather than actually experiencing a storm, we can simulate storms in our software and see what the impact is. We try to get ahead of it. We always plan that if there's an outage, how can we keep the lights on? What's the best process to prevent it? In the end, five, ten years from now, there's going to be a whole mix of operational procedures driven by what we do on prediction and warning. And then there also will probably be some level of hardware controls to ensure the reliability of the grid. Space weather affects technologies. As conditions develop, we put out alerts, warnings, and watches to our customers so they can take action. There's different types of impacts on communication systems, and the HF, we call the high frequency, which is that band of communications, 3 to 30 megahertz. But it's a very important band of radio communication because it's used widespread. It's used, for example, by the airlines. HF radio is most commonly used for position reporting when you're going across the ocean airspace, which is devoid of, of radar. And, and ATC can't see you, so you're, it's up to you to report your position and your altitude and your speed. HF works great most of the time, except during a big flare. And during a big flare, that HF communication capability could be gone within a minute or two. So as soon as we see something happening in there, or we see a flare, it's one of the first things we do is alert 
the aviation community, hey, big flare, HF's gonna be impacted. Once we know that there's an event going on, then the aviation industry and the airlines can react to that. They can alter their routes over the poles. They can lower the altitudes that they're flying at, or maybe decide not to fly at all in the interest of their passenger safety. So that's just one example of how EHF is used, but the emergency response community will use it a lot too. It's one of their primary backups. When you've lost connectivity between certain government agencies, it gives you that long-range coverage to talk from out of state to federal governments or from the FEMA locations to the state uh, emergency operations centers. So if you've got a big hurricane impact in the coastline, whatever big city, uh, we've got the cell towers down and whatnot, we've got emergency communication folks in there. Those folks are very familiar with space weather and how it impacts their systems. Here in recent years, it was used during Katrina when we had a lot of communications outages down there. It was also used during Hurricane Ike. There was an outage of the telephone circuits with the Texas State Emergency Office, so it was used in both of those situations. So when we talk about backup, especially for the airlines, typically they'll have SATCOM, so it'll be satellite communication. The satellite technology that emergency responders use could be GPSs, could be satellite phones, satellite data terminals. Space weather events can impact SATCOMs. The impact can range from a nuisance to loss of a spacecraft. So we will give them the heads up. If we have space weather events, flares, whatnot, they need to know what's impacting their systems. Situational awareness is key. Time is of essence to these folks. Again, it's life and death. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back, uh, sea ice analysis for today. Uh, not much different from yesterday. Uh, still pretty uh, solid there, Eastern Beaufort Sea. Uh, a few fractures, it looks like, possible leads there, uh, just uh, uh, east of Point Barrow. And then a little more extensive area to the west there. And then still that open area, south east southeast of Wrangell Island. Moving on to the coastal water forecast, full gales coming into the uh, southeast coast tomorrow with the next system rolling in. Southeast 45 knots uh, for the central and south coast with 19 foot seas. North coast, southeast 40 knots. Lynn Canal, Glacier Bay, northern inside waters, southeast 20 knots with gale force gust to 35 knots. Stevens Passage, small craft advisories with gale force gust to 60, or I'm sorry, 55 or to 45 knots. Clarence Strait, south winds, 45 knots and 13 foot seas. Monday, lighter winds there, central southern inside waters, both south at 20 knots, 46 foot seas, 15 knots, uh, 15 knots southerlies in, in the forecast for Lynn Canal, three foot seas, small craft advisories for the south coast where winds will be southwest at 25 knots. And the north coast, uh, small craft advisories also southerlies, 25 to 30 knots with seas uh, running 25 to 27 feet. And for the uh, Prince William Sound Zone uh, tomorrow, northeast, 25 knots. That's good for small craft advisories. But the uh, North Gulf Coast looking at gale force east northeasterlies, 35 knots with 15 foot seas. Barrett Islands, northeast, 40 knots. And Kamishak Bay, northeast, 45 knots, 20 foot seas. Gale warning, Southern Cook Inlet, northeast, 40 knots, 16 foot seas. And small craft advisories north of the Forelands for 25 knot winds from the northeast. And for Monday, northeast winds 25 knots, uh, still northern Cook Inlet, gales southern Cook Inlet at 35, uh, and Kamishak Bay, gale warnings north 35, southeast 25 for the western North Gulf Coast, Barren Islands, southeast 30 knots, eastern North Gulf Coast, 25 foot seas, southeast 25 knot winds for Prince William Sound with seas at about 6 feet. Shilakoff Strait, just under storm force northeasterlies tomorrow at 45 knots. Kodiak Island, the east side there, east at 40, 45 knot winds, Sitkanak to Castle Cape from the northeast. Storm warnings from, Sitka, or from Castle Cape to Cape Sarachev, northeast winds 50 knots, seas just under 30 feet. And gale warnings from Bristol Bay and the uh, north side of the Alaska Peninsula there for northeast winds 35 to 40 knots. 
For Monday, north 20 knots for Bristol Bay and small craft advisories for the Bering Sea side of the Alaska Peninsula, northwest 25 and westerly winds at 30 knots from Cape Sarachev eastward to Sitkanak and up the east side of Kodiak Island, northwest 30 knots for Shilakoff Strait. 40 knot northerlies uh, tomorrow for Unalaska Island, 35 knot northerlies for Unmak Island, and 30 knot northerlies for Adak and Atka, Amchitka, north at 20, and for Kiska, Shimi and Atu, northwest 25. Much lighter winds in store for Monday for the Aleutians there with uh, west northwesterlies, 15 knots from Amchitka to Shimia, and Adak and Atka, northwest at 15. Unmak Island, north to northwest, 20 knots, 6 to, or seas around 10 feet, and then Alaska Island, small cat advisories, northwest, 30 knots with 10 to 15 foot seas. And pretty windy day for the uh, southwest coast tomorrow. South of Nunavak Island, just under storm force northerlies at 45 knots, and Yukon Delta Coast, northeast at 40. Pribilofs, northeast winds, 40 knots, northeast 35, St. Matthew Island, and northeast 30 knots for the St. Lawrence Island area. And uh, brisk wind advisories for Norton Sound, north winds 25 knots. That holds through Monday for Norton Sound, north 30 knots, St. Lawrence Island, and gales continue along the southwest coast from the north, 35 to 40 knots. And the Pribilofs, 30 knots from the north, same as St. Matthew Island. Eastern Arctic coast, westerly is 15 to 20 knots, 15 knot westerly central coast, west side south at 20, and the northerly is 15 to 20 knots from Cape Beaufort to Wales. And for Monday, north 25, not winds for the area from Wales to Cape Thompson and northeast 15 to 20 knots the western Arctic coast central coast light northerlies and light westerlies on the eastern Beaufort Sea coast for tonight next big storm brings the wind and rain into the uh, Kodiak Island area and that begins to push in toward the North Gulf Coast late tonight rain a return to rain heavy at times for the Panhandle with a high wind watch out late tonight uh, through tomorrow uh, for the uh, southern southeast coast and the flood watch continues for the uh, northern areas. And then for Sunday or tomorrow, that uh, front continues to push in and the low tracks just east of Kodiak on Monday. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbormaster before you go boating. Thank you.